Hello. Keith Ruck here at VintageMachinery.org. So we're back out in the shop today and uh, working on finishing up this collet rack that I uh, started a couple weeks ago. And uh, in the last episode, we took the aluminum uh, plate here, quarter inch thick aluminum plate, and uh, basically drilled a bunch of holes in here using an annular cutter, a rotor brooch type cutter, uh, to get my holes uh, in there on the milling machine. You can go back and look at that uh, previous video if you want to see that process. Um, when we got through with that, you know, I got my collets here and, and uh, they were just a little bit tight. Uh, I mean, they'll fit down in here, but they're just a little bit tight and some of them don't really want to go in there very well. So, you know, and these angler cutters, they come in fractional sizes and, uh, you know, really couldn't get one just a couple of thousandths over, uh, but no big deal. What I'm doing is I'm just taking um, an adjustable reamer and we're reaming that out, uh, just shaving out just ever so slightly. And when I do that, you can see the collets just uh, fall right in, which is what I want. So, so my fix for this is fairly simple. It's just requiring a little bit of elbow grease, but uh, I've got an adjustable reamer on here. And I've talked about adjustable reamers and how in some applications, these things are just really awesome. And this is one such application where I've got a hole, I need to make it just a little bit different, a little bit larger. Uh, it's not necessarily a precision hole per se, it just needs to be a little bit bigger than what it is. So uh, basically what I do is I just drop this down in here and uh, it's a, you know, it's a fairly, loose fit as it is and we're just uh, reaming out just a little bit extra material there and um, it just takes a couple of seconds uh, per hole and just a matter of time going through here. For holding this down, I took some clamps and just clamped it down to some sawhorses. Uh, that gives me good access all the way through here. So I'm gonna take a few minutes. I've already got about half of the holes done. There's 80 total. And I'll go ahead and knock out the other ones here. Got all my holes reamed now. I've checked everything out. So all my collars are fitting good. And next thing we wanna do is, is go ahead and make um, the sides, uh, the little angle pieces uh, that's gonna mount to. Now I've decided that instead of making out of metal, uh, I'm going to combine the elements of wood and metal together in this. I think it'll make a really nice looking piece. So I've got some uh, three quarter inch uh, oak that I'm going to actually make the sides out of. Now I've been over here and I've kind of been mocking this thing up, uh, laying this up here, basically using this uh, commercial made collet rack. This is for uh, 5C collet, so just a different size collet. And my collets fit in here, everything. Uh, the depth is, it would be fine just like this. So I think what I want to do is I want to copy this so that I can put these on a shelf right next to one another. Yeah, one of them will be a little bit higher than the other, but no big deal. And um, it'll just line up down my, my shelf. So I'm going to basically copy these sides, um, have the bottom width the same, the angle the same, and again, it'll be a little bit taller. So. Um, what I did was I just basically, or what I'm going to do is I've come in here and I'm just transferring this angle down uh, to here. So I've got a couple of marks on here and I'm going to get a straight edge. We're just going to come across this thing uh, and we'll cut the board using that angle and then make the two sides so they match. I'll show you how we'll do that. First thing, let's get this angle on here. I've got my mark. I don't know if you can see this. There's one here and here. Uh, just on either end of that. I'm just going to put my straight edge across those like such and using the pencil, oops, move just a little bit. Here we go. All right, we got our mark all the way down there. Next thing I'm going to do is we're going to just cut this board off um, somewhere along here. I'm going to figure out exactly how high up I need to go. Uh, we'll just cross cut this and then we'll basically have the two sides on the two different pieces here. I've got my miter gauge set up with about a 15 degree angle on here, which is what matches uh, what we've got. And uh, what we're going to do is just use this as a guide and uh, we'll just rip this board um, along that line. And uh, the two sides are not gonna match perfectly, but what I'm gonna be able to do is we'll be able to line them up and get them where they do match perfectly and cut the tops and bottoms off uh, to match. So let's go ahead and uh, do this. Turn the saw on. Our board 
board where we want our cut. So we ripped this in half. So the nice thing about doing it this way is that my angle is the same, exactly the same uh, on either side. So when I flip these uh, parts over, uh, they match up. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, line them up so that they are the same and they are a little overlapping one another. And I'm gonna find uh, where the bottom here is seven and three quarter inches wide. I've actually got a mark there and we're gonna cut both of them off at the same time uh, to that size. Got my mark on here where I want to cut and again I've got these lined up. They're kind of, you know, wedging each other whatever but where uh, they're the same width. The, the, the back face and the front face are the same. I got my saw blade here. Let's see, I need to move that in just a little bit right on my mark. Just a touch more. Yep. That's good right there. We'll uh, cross cut these. So now we'll go over here and uh, figure out where we need to cut the top off. And we'll have our sides pretty well done. Voila, coming together. So now what I need to do is uh, drill some holes and countersink them in here for some screws and uh, we'll screw all this together. I'm gonna lay these out to drill the holes. Uh, I'm just gonna mark them, lay them out and then use a center punch. We'll just go drill them on the drill press. So I got my caliper set. I know that my wood that I'm using is three quarters of an inch, 750 thousandths. So we're doing half of that, three eighths or 375. And uh, I'm just going to scratch a mark. This is just some uh, Blue Magic marker that I put on here for some layout fluid. And now, let's see, these are four and three quarter inches apart. So we need to go Two and, um, well, I'm just going to kind of center up on these two here. So, so the first one we'll put right here. And then off of that, I will go the four and three quarters. This does not have to, or let's see, what is that? Four and a quarter, rather. And this is not anything precision by any stretch of the imagination. I'm going to countersink these holes uh, for my screws to go down into. That should be pretty close right there. Well, I'm going to just a touch deeper. So now 
want to go ahead and uh, screw this side down. So I've got everything where I want it. I'm just going to start by drilling a pilot hole in here for my screw to go into. I'm using um, just some wood screws here, but out here at the museum, um, we try not to use a lot of Phillips heads because it's not time appropriate for the historic village, which is representing a 1890s and 1910. It'd be a lot easier if I had some Phillips head screws here, but this is just what we have. Uh, so I'm making do with uh, the straight shanks. They're a little more aggravating, but uh, it'll be fine. All right, I'm gonna go over to the other side now and uh, get this one started in the right place. Continue on with the rest of them now. So here we are with the finished product, guys. It turned out really nice. Um, so after I left the shop at the museum, I brought this home and I did uh, get my sander. I sanded the wood. Uh, we put a finish on this. This is Water Locks, which is a, one of my favorite wood finishes. It's a tongue oil based finish. Uh, it'll give us some protection, uh, help with the oily fingers or whatever that may touch this down the road. Uh, but all in all, it looks great. I will also admit that when I put the uh, collets in, there were a few of the holes that were still just a little bit on the tight side. And I ended up just taking a um, little Dremel tool with a little sanding disc and just kind of went around each one of these uh, and just cleaned them up a little bit. I mean, there were a few of them that just had some little rough spots in them uh, from that reamer. And uh, anyway, we cleaned those up and, and now the, the collets, they fit in very nice, just like what you want, uh, in and out real easy. Uh, so I'm very happy with how everything uh, is working. And uh, I put my collets that came with my collet chuck. When I picked up that machine, it came with all these collets that are in here. And I'm uh, missing a few. Uh, the first one up here, so this one is 1 16th of an inch. I think that's actually the smallest one uh, that they made. Uh, you know, these are by 30 seconds. So the first one there would be a 1 32nd. Like, so I'm not even sure they made one that small. Don't know that I would ever need one that small. Um, but everything else is by 30 seconds of an inch. I got four uh, missing holes in here and I wrote down what they were. 21 30 seconds, 23 30 seconds, 29 30 seconds, and an inch and 16th. So at some point in time I'll probably get on eBay or somewhere and try to round up those uh, couple of missing ones that are in here. Uh, the bottom row down here, these are actually some extras, uh, duplicates that were uh, in with all these other ones. So. Uh, I just stuck them down there for right now. And uh, the reason I have some extra ones in here, extra holes in here, is just for additional collets that I may pick up. You know, obviously these are from my rounds, but they also made collets for square stock. They made collets for hex uh, stock. And, um, you know, I may pick up some little odds and ends here that, are, that kind of fill this out. So all in all, I'm very happy with it. Uh, next to it down here, I've got my uh, 5C collet rack. This is, uh, of course, just a commercial made, uh, probably made in China. Um, I, you know, it, it does its job, but I was, I've never really been super happy with this one. Um, I bought it really cheap uh, from a um, fellow I know up at Arnfest last year. And one of the things that really aggravated me was the, the, the sides on it were just, they just flopped around. So I made a little modification. I put a couple of uh, pieces of wood, one across the top and one across the bottom here. And that just gives this thing some stability and greatly improves uh, this part as far as I'm concerned. And again, I made these 
uh, so that the angle is the same, the bottom width is the same on them, so these can go on a shelf together. And even though the height is a little bit different, they basically take up the same amount of space. Um, and again, I think these will be great additions. Don't have near as many 5C collars as I do over here. Um, and I don't really use a lot of 5C. The only thing I have uh, 5C uh, right now is just a couple of little collet blocks like uh, that I can use in the mill machine to hold something. If I'm, I've got a square one and a hex one, and uh, so you know, just holding, work holding more than anything else. And uh, uh, you know, I'll probably pick up a few more of these uh, as they become available. These 5C collars are pretty easy to find. So at some point in time, I'm going to want to also make a uh, collet rack to hold my 22J collets. Uh, these are 2J collets. They're basically the same uh, basic shape, but obviously the 22J is much larger. Uh, and I have a collet chuck for this one as well. And um, I've got probably right now maybe 10 or 12 collets this size. Uh, a friend and, and viewer recently called me and said he had found a bunch of these at a machinery dealer uh, and he picked up a bunch of them for me pretty cheap. Haven't got them yet. Uh, so I'm going to probably need to come up with a rack to hold these as well. And uh, probably we'll use the same basic design, but of course with the size of these and also because they go up to much larger diameters, a lot more potential collets. Uh, you know, I may have to build a couple of these uh, type racks to, to hold my 22 J's. Uh, but at some point in time down the road, uh, that may be a future project as well. So that'll be a wrap. Uh, as always, thank you guys for watching. Uh, thanks for all your comments. Uh, thanks for your subscriptions. Uh, to people who subscribe, if you haven't already, please do hit the subscribe button, subscribe to my channel, and uh, we'll try to get some more work done in the shop and share it with you guys coming up very soon. Thanks a lot.